Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back out to the channel. And I'm really, really excited because today, as you guys can tell by the caption and you know what's on the screen right now, we are going to be tiering the Omicrons. Now, the Omicrons are something that are a huge buzz in our game right now. They're a very, very rare resource. And so it just makes sense to tier them and uh, you know maybe reinforce or make you think about some of those investments that you are potentially going to be doing. Now, before we get into the video, I just want to give a huge shout out to all you guys. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Uh, we were really, really close to our 1,000 subscriber goal. So if you guys haven't subscribed yet, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And thank you guys for all the likes and the comments and the shares and everything else. Like, I really just appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. Um, so now let's get into the video. Again, Omicrons are very, very important, or they, they are seemingly important. It was kind of released on Operation Metaverse's uh, interview with them that they plan on giving every new character an Omicron. So this is going to be a living, breathing list. And, you know, eventually we might have to just cut it down to maybe the top like 20. But um, for the time being, I want to rate all of them. So uh, this is how we're going to tier it. And I'll, I'll kind of explain what the tiers are and um, kind of how I, you know, originally ranked them and what's kind of like my criteria going into it. Again, though, with this being a new series, I'm more than willing to listen to you guys' opinions. Uh, I want your guys' thoughts on the, these things and uh, things that you guys want to see as well. Uh, I think above me will be kind of the description, but eventually as we start to get more and more gameplay footage, I would love to just, you know, kind of splice in some footage from other YouTube channels or, or my own or whatever the case is. Um, so that way, that way there's something playing in the background right now. It's pretty blank in here, but again, this is just our initial run at this thing. So, uh, I'm going to have to move my phone cause it's definitely going to ring. Um, but yeah, guys, so hopefully that is, you know, hopefully that it kind of explains, uh, a little bit about this. So for those who have never done a tier list before, there's a lot of times, you know, it, it's kind of ABCD and then S is sort of like the elite tier. So the way that I kind of thought of this is hey, S tier is like your galactic legends, right? Um, A tier is sort of like your epic, epic confrontations. And I'd really lump in at this point, the conquest characters as well. The two that we've gotten are just amazing. And although maybe Razor Crest isn't kind of the most amazing ship, it's really required in the, the current meta that it's in. So um, kind of the conquest character um, level of you know characters, and B or B tier I would say is sort of like your hero's journey. You know CLS, J, JTR, JKR, uh, DR kind of characters. Um, C tier is going to be sort of like your legendaries, so like GMY, EP, Padme, etc. And D, D tier is really just sort of like everyone else, right? And there is a big gap in d tier i totally recognize that you know you have characters that are amazing like chupio in there that might feel like a legendary or whatever and then you have characters like mob enforcer who's just not really doing much so i get that but it's basically just everything else right like like what i could see with just a normal leadership or whatever the case is so hopefully that explains a little bit um the the criteria that i kind of went off for this is really number one i didn't care about the game mode um I don't care about if you think that territory battles is the best or if you think that TW is the best or GAC is the best now that, you know, there's more to be gained. This this doesn't have anything to do with game mode. This is just specifically looking at, and this kind of goes into number two, what is the ability, right? So what does the ability do? How much better does it make the character? How much better does it make a hypothetical team? And within those teams too, I'm also looking about, hey, what? how much does it take to make that team, right? If it takes a bunch of amazing characters to make it really, really good, then I'm not saying that I'm going to hold that against them, but it's just also sort of not feasible because uh, you also have to have other characters for you know said factions, right? Um, specifically talking about like, like when we look at Phasma's Omicron, um, you know, Sure, you could put SLKR in there, right? But I mean, SLKR kind of just goes into his own team. And then like, hey, how much of 
SOKR's team are you taking away from him in order to try to make you know Phasma's good? So it's sort of like taking a baseline. And again, that's a little subjective, and I and I understand that. So that's why I want your guys' feedback on this as well. And then kind of last thing is that we are looking at this mostly from a character standpoint. Again, we want to make sure that the character is good and also the team. There is a team aspect in this, but mostly we're looking at it from that perspective. There will be a few exceptions, and I will definitely talk about those um, you know, as they come up. Because again, um, some of them, they're like one sentence long, right? And it would just like if we were just to rate the one sentence, we'd be like, oh, that's not that cool. But in the context of the team, it might be really amazing. So I just want to get those those key points out there um before we actually start this list. And as we also introduce all these, I will probably read most of them as they come in. But, um, you know, if I read it, each and every single one of them, it, this video would probably be super, super, super long. So as we get new ones, I will read the new ones just so that way everyone's familiar with it. But again, I'll just probably talk about it. And then, like I said, up above me or somewhere, whenever I splice this video, there will just be the full description of what it does. Okay, and on to our first one, guys. We are going into the D tier. Now, D as in don't put this on and expect for the character to become amazing. Um, that is what I'll, I'll say for that one. So the first one that we have is uh, Valiant Spirit by Rose Tico. Now, again, I just, you know, the here's one that I can actually honestly say that i think might move up just by way of seeing it right now i'm not saying that's a terrible one at all i'm not saying that it's the worst one although it is the worst one on this list of omicrons like it doesn't it's not a bad one it's just i don't know who she replaces currently we kind of have our teams for the resistance set up i just don't really see how this happens right because there's only a certain amount of characters, resistance characters that inflict exposed. They're currently really not on a team currently. Um, or if they are, like if, if it's JTR lead, like she's really got her team that's kind of made an impact. And I just think that by bringing in Rose Tico, you're potentially just kind of maybe not upgrading and maybe not downgrading, but you're just more or less staying the same. So potentially some you know interchangeability between like basically r2 and um rose tico but here's the deal r2 gives turn meter and he gets turn meter and rose tico doesn't really other than five percent um and so that's really how jtr teams really outspeed people is through their bb8 so I, I, right now the extra offense also too like as as you start killing opponents you know it's gonna be less and less offense as well so for me right now it's just on the d tier so i know a lot of people are gonna be like oh that's wrong and i like i said i encourage that guys okay and so now the next one that we're gonna get into is raiding parties by chief nebit okay so this is a long one um and i'm not necessarily saying it's terrible but it's still, I would still consider it kind of D tier um, because it's reliant upon buffs. And while a lot of teams use buffs, uh, again, it's just sort of like, hey, it's reliant upon it. Um, and and while there's other thermals that are happening within the team itself, and when especially when they attack, really what you have to kind of wonder is, are your Jawas good enough? Now, if you do have good Jawas, you know, maybe potentially can take out some decent teams, but I just don't really see this punching up like to, to doing crazy things. Um, you know, maybe like Padme who who thrives on buffs, Jedi Knight Revan. Um, but again, I don't see too many of those on defense anymore. Um, and so I kind of just question like, hey, how much use you would get out of this? Um, and is it really worth it? Again, maybe it is. But we haven't seen it in you know action yet, or at least I haven't seen it in action yet. So maybe you know my mind will be changed on this one. Okay, and the next one in the D tier is going to be Simple Tactics by our guy Chief Chirpa. And listen, this one actually doesn't sound bad. I could actually really see it moving for moving up, you know, a tier. But right now, what, what I see it as is just sort of a normal leadership. Like, they added 30 speed to him. 
I guarantee you though, this will catch people off guard. Like they're there if you have well modded and well geared um, uh, you know, Ewoks, I guarantee you this will happen. Like people will get caught off guard with it. Um, if they just decide to do something kind of crazy with it. Um, and like I said, if they have decent mods on Paplu, this is going to add a lot of speed into him, which is going to really effectively make him go first. Now, once he goes first, anytime that they do a special, there's a 100% chance to call someone in, which is going to be a turn meter gain. Now, here's where I start to kind of kind of go a little bit off of this and why I, I, I rated him here. The, the only increase in damage was on basics. Now, of course, there are people that are called in whenever uh, you know other people are using special or other Ewoks are using specials, but um, there's only really one guy that does decent damage, and that's Wicket. And I would love to have seen it just be a forty percent overall increase, like any ability kind of thing, because he really is the guy. Um, and I feel like all of his abilities, like if he got a forty percent increase, I'd definitely be more on this. Now, the other side of this, though, is on defense, why a lot of people still won't fall for this is because I still think that, the, you know, a decent relic Ness is going to kill these guys, and that's just kind of the way it's going to be. Unless, again, of course, you know, modding it has you with a decent potency on low gray, and you just time them out. Um, but I just don't see this one really making a huge difference in, in much. Um, so I'm going to put them in the D tier. Okay, next is going, we're moving up to the C tier. C as in, you could put this on, but there's probably better options. <laughs> um, we are going to go with Sith Cruelty as our first one here. And this one, really why I selected this one, why it's actually so close to the bottom for me personally, is going to be because it's relying upon two things, pain and isolate. Now, there's only two characters that do each one of those right now. Um, you know, again, you know, they might introduce someone in the future that, you know, puts those debuffs on other people and then it really increases her viability. But right now, that means she is solely tied to, um, you know, the Sith trio, which, which could be a great thing or it could just sort of be not your plan. So uh, the big thing, too, with the, this Omicron is if she's not with anyone, basically the only thing that's going to happen is, if I, re if I read this right now, um, basically whenever she defeats an enemy, all other Sith allies are going to gain 5% max uh, protection and 5% offense for each stack of loyal hand on her. So there's a max protection gain. There's you know a little bit of offense gain when she's you know defeating people. But again, without Treya... Without Scion, you know, those are kind of usually like target one, target two, if you're going against them. Um, you know, it just kind of, it limits that. And I don't really like that about Omicrons. Like, I want something that we can really grow into. And that is something that, like, again, you know, the 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 possibilities seem almost endless kind of thing. Uh, especially with it being so rare right now. So that's why we put uh, Sith Cruelty there on, on the C tier. Okay, so moving right on to our next C tier, and I think this one's going to surprise some people. Uh, I know it definitely surprised me, but whenever I just looked at it, I just knew. Um, it's going to be Force Repulse from Starkiller. Now, I expect Starkiller to be really, really good in Grand Arena, but this Omicron was really um, a little bit lackluster. Now, this is one of those ones where it's a sentence long. I'm not saying that that's bad. Uh, you know, it's a dispel all buffs. In that ability that you're using, he gains offense for every buff dispelled. The thing that I don't like about it, and again, kind of, you know, with the this rating scheme, is that that requires the AI or, you know, the opponent to do something. If you're, you know, if there's not really, if this isn't a buff heavy team, that Omicron's not doing anything, right? And it's not adding any offense or anything like that. Like, that's my biggest thing with this uh, ability. Now, again, we could get this character at right and see it and that move might just be massive even with only two or three uh buffs right uh, you know that that could be the case and that could that would probably elevate this a little bit more but right now i just feel like that's just not a great omicron so for that reason i'm putting force repulse down here 
Okay, and now the next one that we're going to be looking at is Sadistic Glee by Darcidius, right? Um, now, I actually really do like this one, and I think that it has potential to move up. But the real reason why it's down on this level right now is it's got what I call the Galactic Legend Clause, right? Again, not really super interested in stuff um, that it can be OP. And I think that this does have the potential to be overpowered, but it, it just has this thing where like, hey, it's excluding Galactic Legends, whether that's for your team or against your team or whatever the case is. Like, I don't like those clauses because... As the game moves on, right, like we're going to get more and more Galactic Legends. And as we get more and more Galactic Legends, people will feel the need or the, you know, the the luxury of being able to use Galactic Legends more freely. And so with this, it almost feels like there is some sort of timestamp. Now, we don't know how long that timestamp is or whatever the case is. But the what I do love about this is that we can gain 200 speed um, from from him right like or he can gain 200 speed from himself by just basically using his aoe repeatedly like that sounds amazing to me under an ep lead this guy will take repeated turns as long as he can land some some debuffs and, and there's just like i don't even care that it doesn't do that much damage the amount of debuffs that he's going to throw on people he's going to juice up a ton of targets for your finishers like Darth Vader or potentially Mara Jade. And so I just really, really do like his actual ability. And there's also a little bit of, you know, hell share in here as well. Um, I, like I said, I could see this one moving up, but right now the whole like Galactic Legend clause and the other thing with him too is that even with an EP lead and all that other good stuff, he still has to go, right? Like that's the problem is if, you know, we need him to go and if we can get him to go, then he's not going to stop taking turns. Like it's going to be really, really awesome for him, especially under EP lead specifically. So for that reason, I'm going to say statistically right now is C tier, but I, like I said, I could see it moving up a tier. Okay, next up, we've got Fire at Will, Captain Phasma's. Now, a lot of people added this one. I don't think it's terrible. I just don't think it's that great because, again, this is kind of what I alluded to before, right? What does it take away from your SLKR? What does it bring to, you know, to bear on the other team? And, again, if you're really running kind of the best SLKR team, at best, your Phasma is like a, you know, a C tier team. Like it, like it's cleaning up C tier level teams, which is, you know, again, in my terms, a legendary um, or potentially losing to him as well. But, you know, listen, it's a decent one. But, uh, you know, I just I just don't see that a lot of the stuff that I have seen and I've seen some really cool stuff. Um, but they're using Red Trooper, they're using Kylo Ren Unmasked, right? They're using some other characters that just seem like they're really, really necessary. Hawks even sometimes. And uh, while I agree that that's the best version and they can get some really great results, again, it's really just not feasible for your SLKR unless you're just trying to SLKR solo something. But um, that, that just kind of takes away from the team itself. Um, and if you give the, you know, Phasma the leftover, first order again it's just not going to kill too much but it's still a decent one to add okay the next one that we have and actually i can see this one moving down a little bit uh because again it's got the galactic legend clause which i don't truly truly love but what i do love about it is that it is a ton of protection loss right and that's why it's rated here at the b tier and then we'll just say b as in uh b pretty good to have but again not i wouldn't call it a must have like especially if it's your first one uh emperor's hand it, like i said it looks really really good um in the right scenarios but again that scenario is they can't be a galactic legend a lot of the galactic legends have a ton of protection that i would love to see this put on but it wasn't the case um you know they made the call out to it specifically. Hey, this is supposed to really counter gas. Uh, gas is a pretty good team. If if you know your empire can end up beating gas, that's I think a pretty good draw. Um, but what I will say is, you know, she starts the turns right. Like she gets a hundred percent turn meter. The only thing that would stop that is, hey, if they have a bonus turn. So guys like Watt, guys like Han Solo, or if 
um you know like guys like hucks are in the the opposing team um right then she's not going to get a first turn but she's basically guaranteed the first turn which is again why i've rated it above some of those other like you know anti-galactic legend stuff and again that protection loss is pretty big and um overall like i just i, I do like it uh and then there's another clause in there that basically hey whenever um an, an enemy unit is defeated they gain some max protection and then they add vulnerable to uh, an, an opponent right so uh, overall like i said i could see it moving down but right now just because she gets that 100 percent turn meter and depending on what team like if she is under an ep team she's gonna you know get that team going you know to to start off the, the whole match which is pretty huge so for that reason i guess i will put her in the b tier that's that's kind of why i decided that okay next one is the battlefront command um by rollo now i know a ton of people were you know kind of dogging on it because it's cb right again i didn't take that into account i just wanted to see hey what is it the fact of the matter is, is it's a really good ability actually <laughs> like you're you're getting a ton of things it really makes cls platoonable um in that game mode uh but specifically like if even if it wasn't in tb this would be a really good ability um and there's just a lot to like about it with rollo not much to say really other than hey there's you know turn meter gains uh there's um recovery of health and protection there is there's just a ton of things in there that I, that i really do like okay so next one that we have here is going to be boundless force throw and by star killer and actually another one that i can potentially see moving down the real reason why i put it this high up is because there is a buff immunity heal immunity which are two super super important things you don't know how important they are until you're sitting behind someone that can't be killed because or, or you can't get around a taunt or something like that um just those can't be copied, dispelled, um, prevented kind of thing. And uh, while he's in a certain state. Now, that is definitely the part where I detracted a little bit from this one. But overall, like I just really like I like anything that can't be dispelled. I like things that can't be resisted and stuff like that. Those should be like real keys to, hey, that's that sounds like that's pretty solid. And um, those two specifically, heal immunity and buff immunity, are really great. Uh, so, again, I, I'm going to put Boundless Force Throw here on the B tier. Uh, remember, that's sort of like the you know hero's journey kind of abilities that I that I see in this uh, tier list. Okay, R keeping on with the B tier, we've got prepared for anything dash rendars now this is one that i told you guys like most of the times we were looking really solely at the character with a little bit of team emphasis in there as well this is one where again it's one line right it's just that hey when allies lose you know prepared they gain it again and this is huge for his team not only for his leadership because his leadership makes it to where people hit harder they're tankier etc but really when you look at the team mechanics Vandor Chewy isn't going to let anyone die. You have to mark around, you know, assuming that you have a, a person like L3 in the team, you know, you're going to have to mark around. Now, the reason why it's B tier and like that sounds really, you know, crazy because, you, you know, if you say, hey, someone can't die, right? There's still ways around it, whether it be, uh, you know, annihilates, whether it be, you know, marking around, like I said, um, or just guys like gas 501st right that don't allow revives um so while while it is nice uh i am going to rate it only as a b tier because i just don't think that it's just completely broken uh but it you know again i think that it's going to be a nice one to have especially if you have that faction geared up okay and the last in the b tier guys is going to be fet legacy the new hot tub boba omicron first one on the list is up there at the top again i actually see this one moving up there's some really solid things in here he's basically you know in tw or in his game mode he's immune to ability block and stun uh pretty two really impressive things um about it right and anytime he defeats an enemy he gains 100 percent uh, protection sort of like a lot of the other fets um do 
And again, just kind of not knowing the mechanics and how fast we're able to get momentum and stuff like that. I I have kind of reserved it, but I could definitely see this being A tier. Uh, just because ability block and stun, being immune to those things are really good. Typically you see them at the, you can see them at the hero's journey, um, but typically you start to see those definitely in the Galactic Legends, right? But overall, I'm just going to, I'm going to give it a conservative approach here and call it a B tier one right now until I get to see what it actually does. Okay, guys, moving on to the A tier. A for, uh, this is where the fun begins. I don't know. <laughs> um, first one that we've got, guys, is agility training. Now, I know a ton of you guys are going to just probably be all over me because this is the one that when it came out, everyone was like, this is the most OP thing ever. Yes and no. Uh, I will say this much. Again, remember that we're not trying to rip away from the best teams. Uh, the Jedi are in a really weird spot. They've got a few premium guys that deal damage. And then beyond that, they've just kind of got a ton of support guys. Like you're either just super, super amazing as a Jedi, or you're just really kind of below mediocre. Like there's not too many in between that spot. So agility training it's going to be hard to try to take away from a team and still keep that team very, very viable. And all the Jedi leads are very, very viable, I would say, or at least the, the ones that we use, you know, every day. Now, this is amazing. Like, I don't want to kind of down talk it, but I think that it's been overhyped a little bit. Uh, again, it's got the Galactic Legend Clause in there. I rated this one higher, though, because that Galactic Legend Clause isn't as important. Um, you still get the huge offense gain, right? Like that part seems like it's still there, even with a Galactic Legend brought in. The part though with the Galactic Legend, it is pretty big, right? Like you can start just killing anyone in any order. But again, you know, if you're bringing in a Galactic Legend versus a non-Galactic Legend, in many people's eyes, that's still a win in, you know, in favor of the guy that's not got a Galactic Legend. So that's why he's in the A tier. Epic confrontation tier is kind of how I'm calling this. You know, the same same tier as hey, if you know you brought in a Galactic Legend versus Gas 501st, you know, again, you would probably take that trade off. So I'm gonna rate him right here. Again, we'll see what happens whenever we get down to it. Uh, but I, I'm gonna rate him a little bit lower. Um, all right, next one that we're gonna get into is the this has been the debate, right? We had to put it, we had to put her above. I, I truly think that this is way more transformational for the bounty hunters than agility training is for the Jedi. That's why I'm rating her above um, Qui-Gon Jinn's. Shapeshifter is amazing because it is actually adding speed too. It's adding her base speed, but she's one of the fastest characters in the game. Uh, really, when it came out, I told this to my Discord. I was like, that looks a ton like Chupio's, except for Chupio had, doesn't have speed. So Chupio is really, really good. Uh, or Chubaka, or Chu Nubaka, like whatever we're going to call him, Three Baka. Um, but yeah, I just I just feel like they're, people will sleep on that a little bit. And that, that speed gain can be huge, guys. And if bounty hunters are beating you out the gate... It can be a very, very hard fight for you to kind of reverse that and and move back into the you know the fight without being down a, a guy already. <laughs> and so, same thing though with this. Like, and again, why I kind of rated below or above. There's no Galactic Legend clause. There's like, like I said, once we start getting you know into this spot where we have eight Galactic Legends, people are going to start overkilling. People are going to have ridiculous things for to answer some of these you know good omicrons no matter what but they're just gonna gl it right and that's what has been proven time and time again anytime we get a really solid team people just say well i'll just save a galactic legend for it <laughs> and so again maybe that's a trade-off that you win on but I, I just really like the omicrons that don't say that and hers doesn't say that so let's move on okay guys here it is We've got one right here from Django or 
sorry, Boba Scion of Django, and it's dual barrage. And I just have to say, when you read the ability, it might not seem that great. Tenacity up, okay. Hey, a lot of people offer that. Uh, but really what this is, is it's the first character that is gotten a protection disruption you know on the fleet side there you know there's uh, what one i think um but dual barrage is going to have protection um you know disruption and again when you start talking about a lot of galactic legends and, and it can't be resisted it can't be prevented it can't you know can't be dispelled if i remember right um you guys will be able to tell because it's right above you but it's that is just an amazing, amazing ability when you're able to just completely wipe away someone's protection pool. Now, again, uh, I'm rating it here because there are, you know, I haven't seen a Galactic Legend stipulation, but like there's a lot of people, you know, preloading their JML's protection, especially the R9s. Um, you know, just Galactic Legends in general, they have a huge protection pool that you have to get through. Pretty impressive that you can just disrupt that and just go for their straight health so uh for that one and just because again it is the only one that we've ever seen i'm gonna i'm gonna be pretty high on this one uh and again i'm gonna give it that epic confrontation a tier uh for dual barrage and i think this is the last one right in the a tier i think people will probably be surprised by this but i i think i have decent reasoning for it it is there is much conflict in you, Starkiller. Now, this is one that when you read it, it definitely could feel like a Galactic Legend one. But again, when we're looking at these, I just don't love whenever things are limited. I don't like when things have to have certain things. Right? When I read the the first when I read just the bullet points, I was like, this is amazing. Like there's so many things in here. There's so many like abilities and things to consider when you're going against it. But it also felt a lot like Moff Gideon's leadership. And I know we haven't gotten the fourth one to really support a Moff Gideon lead, but it's just that whole fact that you have to have certain people before you get certain things, right? And and in my experience, right, people will find a different use for someone like that or someone like Starkiller and will just be left in the spot where it's like, well, why did we add this Omicron here? And again, with it being such a, you know, rare resource at this point, uh, while the ability itself is great and I would consider it to be S tier and Galactic Legends worthy, it is again the fact that we need certain roles or certain people to fill up and so that is really the reason why i'm rating it an a tier okay guys and we are moving on to the s tier the final tier and there's only one more left and so if you haven't done the the math here it is going to be we'll say s for so freaking good <laughs> um it is dangerous reputation the lead for hot tub boba I mean, guys, this is actually, it just reads as a Galactic Legend leadership, right? Like, it gives the mastery gain, it gives a speed gain, it gives health and protection, and he gains, like, double that, uh, everything that he's giving. So, there's not much to say with with uh, Hot Tub Boba. He, he's just, that that is, like, a no no-brainer to me. Like, it is just absolutely 100% a Galactic Legends lead Omicron. And I think that he is going to counter Galactic Legends in Territory War. And I think a large part of it is going to be due to his leadership. So um, that is the Omicron tier list, guys. Thank you guys for sticking out to this point. If you guys got this far, you guys are amazing. And uh, let me know what you guys think. Where was I right? Where was I wrong? What do you guys think overall? Uh, anything that you guys would like to see next time, you know, to to further enhance this experience of watching this or things that I can do better. I'm always open to those kinds of suggestions, guys. Go ahead up the Discord. Link is in the description below. You guys be safe. Enjoy each other. And uh, like I said, thanks so much. And we'll see you guys in the next one.